We are back at the Kumamoto Prefectural Gymnasium for a bit of history being made here. The very first Kumamoto Masters Japan, a new addition to the HSBC BWF World Tour. This is a Super 500. Three pretty quick matches here on court one. And we're now getting to the one that everyone has been waiting for. Rasmus Gebke of Denmark takes on Japan's Kento Momota. As you see there, he is a qualifier. That was the result of his uh, ranking. The winner of this match will take on either one of the Chinese players, Lu Guangzhou or Xu Yuqi. That looks like it's going to be very, very tasty indeed. You can hear the excitement, I'm sure, within this venue now. One of the home favorites walks on. And boy, has he had a very good week in the life of Kento Momoto because it's been a, a tough old time for him, hasn't it, in the last few years. And to get his first win in, in two years at the Korean Masters meant a lot to him. He is compatriot Koki Watanabe in the final. And uh, he'll be hoping he has turned a corner. He's got a tough opponent in Rasmus Gemke. And it's an interesting head-to-head -head with Momota clearly in front 5-2. But Genke has won their last two meetings, including the India Open at the start of the year. He won that pretty comfortably. This, this way, okay. So, okay. But otherwise, it was my water all the way. And that really, uh, Chris, is, is a result of Momota just having a tough time since uh, the start of 2020. Yeah, uh, it was so unfortunate. The the things that happened and you know it was nice to see as a fan of badminton let's say a, a totally different Momota last week mm. um, I watched him in Indonesian Open it was the last time I saw him live play and it wasn't yeah. Momota um, I don't know if it was injury issues there was definitely some signs of that I don't know if it was just needed to take things back to the beginning as it were he's had some time away in regards to I think getting his fitness back getting everything ready and last week it was a pleasure to see a the Momota of old. Um, it is a massive ask today. It is. We'll come back to that in a bit. Here's uh, Rasmus Gemke, 26, a former top 10 player uh, a couple of years ago around this time. Currently 28th. He had a good result, didn't he, against Angus and Carlo in the opening round. He was, uh, he's won the Spain Masters before on the World Tour and he was runner up at last year's French Open. Uh, Momota, if you take his record on it's uh, just on its own there, you look at him, 29 years of age, 175 centimetres tall, currently 41st in the world. He was in the 50s uh, last week after that uh, win of Korea Masters. That's pushed him up. Former world number one. That was achieved in September 2018. A former world champion in 2018 and 19. Asian champion as well in those years. He has got 15 or 16 titles now, I should say, to his name. Look at that. He had to go through qualifying to get here. Who would have thought that a few years ago? But look at that result against Lokia New, the eighth seed. A marathon 85 minute. Very tight, wasn't it? But he came through. That will give him such a boost, Chris. But you feel it's going to be a toughie today? Yeah, I mean, he's played eight matches in eight days. That's, that's a big ask for play? anyone. Um, and, you know, Gemp is a great player. Uh, his ranking, I wouldn't say, really reflects his actual level. He's ranked, I think, he's down at 28 in the world, and mm. I think he's a much better player than that. I think he's a top 20 player, um, and he's going to be so much fatigue in, in Momota. I think the crowd are definitely going to play a part because it's, yeah. it's filled up since it since he's walked out, and I'm sure they're going to be very loud supporting him. Charles Wiley, service judge, Shailesh Kulkani is our umpire. Yeah, certainly, even in Korea, it was interesting to see that the Koreans 
were kind of backing him as well. I mean, as you say, badminton fans. I mean, he delighted the world, really? didn't he, when he was having that dominant period. Yeah, and I think it was so unfortunate that the car accident in Malaysia that happened, and he yeah. obviously needed eye surgery. and Never quite been the same, has no, he? No, it's, it's a tough thing, because everything affects someone differently, and, you know, it, it's just nice to see that he's he's back. Yeah. Now, even if today doesn't go as planned for him, hopefully we're going to see the Momoto of old right. for the rest of this year and, you know, next year. And, Ladies and, so and on. gentlemen, on my right, Kento Momota, Japan. There we go. And on my left, Rasmus Gemke, Denmark. Kento Momota to serve. Love all. Play. Here we go then, Momota against Kemke. That was good for Kemke. Service over. One. Yeah, just love. Watching Momota last week, it, it, it kind of rolled the years back a bit. It was nice to see him kind of in his groove. He's not quite where he was before, but he's, there are definite signs there, aren't there? Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest things was smiling. Obviously, yeah, everyone likes winning, so when you're winning, you're going to smile. But it was a, it was just a different body language, a different everything, more the movement. It was a totally different memo. It was much nearer the memo of old, but it will take time. And an incredible shot from Gemka, literally plumb on the line. I think it's two lines in two rallies. And this is the thing what I mean about Gemka, he's a great player. By the way, I'm just going to tell you that we've we'll had a long think about it and tried to challenge for too long. The thing if you wait too long, you're going to make that decision quick. And uh, I think looking back at that replay, he would have got that wrong anyway. Great shot from Demke, what a start! Service over. Oh, he's definitely oh. challenging this one. one two. Well, uh, to be fair to him, he did actually. He yeah, put his hand up quite quickly there. Out. Yeah, I think the umpire's just got a little bit confused there with everything that happened, yeah. Because <laughs> the line judge clearly signalled it was out. Yeah. But I think he was focusing on the motor challenging and then... Oh, it was out. out. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Three, one. No, no, three Love. Should be three love, I think. Oh, he's, yeah, I think the umpire's just getting himself a little bit confused here. Three love, late. Main thing is we've got it corrected now. It's just come out a little bit too passive. He's trying to move the shuttle around, which I totally understand. But Gemp has come out, you know, great intensity, Firing, great yeah. speed, and he's dominating the rallies, taking charge. And he's kind of gone storming out the blocks as it were to a full up lead. Yeah, it's interesting in the, uh, the prior three matches we've had, there's been one clear player apart or a partnership that's just been a little too passive. Taking some time to warm up. Well, it doesn't matter how they come, you've got to go take them. Yeah, I mean, they look like almost crept up the net. There was a little, bit of, quite a lot of fortune. <laughs> but...
Now that's got a bit bigger cheer. Yeah, I think Lamaze has such a good like control over the shuttle. I mean the touch there, great spin. Even the brush there, I mean to perfection. He has I feel like when he lifts or when he plays net, his, his ability to put it exactly where he wants and the control he has is so good. for Kenta Mamota. And that just gets the crowd going as well, doesn't it? That's what they want to see. Okay, then. Holds the progress yeah. of his opponent. He stepped in so well on the return of third, whole Five, turn, and then three. great explosive power to get up behind the shuttle, and then again, good placement on the attack. Gemko with speed, with the physical aspect, definitely with his touch, his control, moving the shuttle around, his skill, his shot quality. But I don't know if Gemko's going to have a big advantage on the physical aspect of it. And the longer the match goes on, it's going to get tougher and tougher for Gemko. sends quite a strong message that rally for me you know Gemka does incredibly well to stay in that rally he kind of had control of it then lost control and then picked one up at the end and then the Motors made a simple-ish mistake and if Gemka can just bleed a few points from the motor Ooh. it just gets tougher and tougher it's that bigger challenge for him Gemka hasn't got the uh, best record necessarily in second round matches 28 wins out of 50 only two of his last five because he won. Better from the motor there, trying to take charge of the rally. Contrast that with uh, Quentin Mota in second rounds, he's won 64 out of 89. So he also has only won one of his last four. Two of his last four, I should say, to the career masters. not only the fact that he's had eight matches in eight games, obviously that takes toll, but some of those matches have been monumental, including yesterday's one. 
America, and this is this almost is, ninety minutes. And that's the thing, you know. Also, we're including a travel day in that. Yeah, <laughs> we, we were actually talking on Sunday when we were commentating. He's got to now rush over to Japan, yeah. and he's got qualifying. Yeah. And two games <laughs> to qualify. Two games a day, right? And yeah, this is the thing that's so tough. But you know, it's because his ranking is down, so he yeah. has to he has to go through qualifying, which is a tougher challenge. And he's going to have to play more tournaments than other people if he really wants to qualify for Olympics. There's only two players it's from a nation. Ask, isn't it? It's a very big ask, and it's a big ask for both these players because mm. for Gemp Gemp is a world-class player, but he's currently the third-ranked Danish player. Yeah. So to overtake either the world number one Victor Axelsen or <laughs> it's a massive challenge. Yeah. Great shot from Momoto. I mean, Momoto has this. He has this ability to be so look so calm, composed, yeah. flowing. You know, he wants to play the match at his speed. The flashes so far from Tomo Water. And the hall is just getting busier and busier, and yeah. everyone's crowding around uh, <laughs> this court just because you can tell everyone's a big, big fan in Japan of. Mamoto. Yeah, I think it couldn't have been set up better for him to have won the career Masters just before returning to Japan for this tournament. And it's interesting because he's on a lot of the marketing, a lot of the posters around. Why not? He is their big name, even though, as you say, he's probably fourth or fifth now in the men's singles for Japan. Yeah, yeah, he would have, you're right, he would have, he would have sneaked down, yeah. Naraoka's, Sunayama's, Koki Watanabe, who we beat in the final. In Japan, I mean, the depth they have in, yeah. in, you know, a lot of categories. I mean, ladies' doubles is actually a lot of cool depth. But even men's singles, you know, we're talking about, you're right, probably the <laughs> fourth or fifth ranked Japanese men's singles player. Who has obviously been world number one. The other thing, of course, is um, uh, that is actually one of the quicker Nine, rallies we've seen. They've been some fairly long ones already. This is going to be a drawn-out affair. Yeah, I mean, it, there's no way this is going to be a, a quick match. Yeah. You know, Gemp is such a hard-working, resilient player that he's not going to give any gifts. He's, right. not, he's not going to allow the most of time on the shuttle. He's not going to try anything too crazy and give him easy points. The motor's is going to win the point. He's going to have to work very hard to win the point. Control your emotions like that. Well, it's going to be impossible to tell. Unless even Play. Wow, that's hard. It's hard because unless we do a slow mo, is it the shuttle? Is it his racket? And it's such a tough call for the umpire to make that. I mean, even on the replay, I couldn't tell. Yeah. Because something clearly hit the net, but was it his racket or was it the shuttle? It's so hard to tell in that incredibly short space of time to make that decision.
That's a good one for Demke just to relieve that pressure. Motta starting to bear down on him. Rasmus, Rasmus, get ready fast. We are taking too much time. Umpire saying that uh, he needs to move a bit quicker. Gemka, but a pretty good lift considering how tight Gemka's net shot was. Lamont did exactly the right thing and basically put it in the sky and put it as high as he could to give himself time to recover. How much do we have to take into account the fact that uh, Momota's a lefty as well? Does that come into the equation at all for Gemke? I mean, to an extent, yeah, he's got to be very aware of, you know, the forehand side and so on, but... Brilliant from Genka there, brilliant. So early on that return of serve. But, you know, he should have done his analysis 11, before the game to, nine, you know, what to look trouble. out for, what to be aware of, and so on. Um, and in Denmark, he's going to be training with other left-handers, so, yeah, I think it's fine for him. At the interval here of this first game, Rasmus Genka is 11-9 up against Kenta Momota. <laughs> Just on that, uh, not on left hand, this is played um, 14 times, one seven lost seven. Five of those seven is lost are against this very man, and come on Okay, leading here. Momota. 12, got such a good defence because every time he's lifting or playing net, the, the quality of those shots is so good. And it gets possibly going to get to the point where Gemka is going to almost force it more and more. We're going to see a few more unforced errors and they are slowly creeping in from Gemka. Very quick to the net, wasn't he? Kenta Momota and he finally draws level. First time he's done that in his match. He yeah, gets that well here, great placement, and then such a smooth movement in. Calm, just to brush it off. It's amazing, he can still move at that speed after, you know, what we've described <laughs> yeah, over the last good. eight days. Wow, uh, is that the platform he needs? Is he... Maybe they will take the lead for the first time in this match. He does. Kentel Morton in front. 
just a few unforced errors over the last four or five points of sneaked in from Gemka, which we, we hadn't seen in the early part of the match. Get ready first. Positions, but he, he does move the shuttle around so well. His, you know, it, whenever he lifts, his lift quality is so good. The Gemka there, he wasn't—he was, he was having the attack most of the point, but he wasn't in a good position. He wasn't on balance. The lifts weren't sure. They weren't obvious. So he didn't really get the chance to be able to try and punish the motor. Longest rally we've had there. That one, 41 shots. Another cheap point, though. Yeah. Bit of a gift there, especially as he just pulled himself back into the match. It's so integral now that neither player makes any simple mistakes like that. He looks frustrated with himself when that happened. Huh. Only briefly held the lead there, Kento Mota. are getting long and intense, Chris. 15, yeah, this 13. is the thing, and this is, you know, it's such a very, well, it's the integral part of the, the first game, you know, this section, can one player just extend their lead if they've got it like Gemka? Can he just stretch it and promote it? It's integral that he stays with it. Those are the two longest rallies we've had in the match. That one now is the longest, 50 shots. Say Momota's made four or five maybe overhead mistakes in okay positions. He's not in trouble really. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he's trying to make too perfect a shot or he's losing it in the lights, I'm not really sure. Hit it too hard, so it keeps going. And again, a simple mistake. Really.
important for them here just to again, nullify any kind of Kenton Walker fight back. He's up by three. Yeah, Moe's just too low there to be able to control that with any kind of good quality. He's got to really lift that and almost start the rally again. To play a net shot from down there is, is asking a lot. I would say just from his body language now, Momo is looking more and more, you know, he is looking more tired and Ooh. it's totally understandable. It's phenomenal, he's so good at moving the shuttle around, but the, it's, it's hard to put enough stress and pressure on your opponent from doing that. You've got to try and take charge. Just two points in it. Turned to action at the Career Masters after last being seen at the Australian Open. They lost to Jonathan Christie in the opening round and then injury issues saw him pull out of the Hong Kong Open and skip the tournaments that followed. Play. And then of course winning at the Career Masters. shot he's actually on balance. It's the only shot that he's actually in an okay position. Feels like we've had so many momentum shifts in this mm. in this first game. Right? Yeah. It's 17 16 but it feels like yeah it feels like it's been up and down. But we're almost half an hour into this first game. <laughs> yeah which is incredibly long and you know there's still a lot a lot left of this first <laughs> yes. game. with his overhead attack and he's you know he's putting stress on his opponent and in this part of the game is 17 all both players are going to be slightly tired or even more than slightly tired it's 27 minutes in it's going to be a few tense moments creeping in now brilliant from Gemka there Mike was just looking at the umpire 18, to see if he was maybe 17. going to call that he was over the net Incredibly tough to call if he is or yeah. not. He'd have to slow mo that. <laughs> we're not sure ourselves, are we? But we're seeing on slow mo. Yeah. But that's great, great from Gemka. Read it incredibly well. So, so emotional. But again, from Genka here, when he gets up, so this one here, see how Momoto takes it late, he gets up, chases forward. Yeah. He's trying to predict what's going to happen, he's trying to take charge of the rally, and this is the integral part. If you get it wrong, you just survive, but if you get it right, you get kind of one step higher up the ladder. You know, you get your foot closer to the, you know, in the good position of the rally.
this one. And I do think, obviously, you know, every game's integral, but this is even more so because we're looking at 30 minutes for the first game. So if this continues and it goes to three games, you know, the motors, as we said, he's played eight matches in eight days, and yesterday his match was about an hour and 25 minutes, yes. which is very, very long. If he has another one of those today, can he sustain this level, you know, throughout the duration that he obviously wants to win in two games? Can he handle three games? Yeah. Is the question. What effect will that have on him? So Gemka, you know, predicted what was going to happen. Gemka was on the net. He was right there. Yeah, the motor knows the shot has to be exceptional. And it, I mean, it was. He, he net boarded, and he's not even taken it that early. And that shows you know, just how good his touch is. These two have really scrapped away. 19 all. We're taking rounds and we're dealing the game. Play. Well, he's had a few, should we say, uh, Disagreements in this first game, Gebke. Well, there's only that's just the second time he's had the lead. In the entire match, what a time to do it. Yeah, and in that rally, I mean, Gemko was the one putting all the pressure on, but he almost forced it so much that he got himself in trouble with that flat lift in the end. And that's where Momoa was so calm and relaxed and almost allowed his opponent to try and come at him and then swapped it around and counter-attacked straight away. Big, big point, this. Well, this place will erupt. Quentin Momoa can take this first game. Kenta Mamota, having trailed for about 95% of this first game, has taken it. Yeah, Mamota's control there. I mean, there were two or three shots. I'm not sure if we're going to get to see them, but his, I mean, his defence was good. But yeah, there were two or three shots in that rally where his control was phenomenal from a difficult situation. And I think this is where people maybe don't quite kind of understand well enough that someone's defence is only as good as their lift quality. And Mamota's defence in that first game was very good because his lifts, his lifts were so good, so accurate. There was one at the net, right up by the net, which you were really impressed by, wasn't you? Well, yeah, he's definitely got net ball. Yeah. To play a good lift off the net ball when the shuttle is tumbling and spinning, it's very difficult to do. I might have put it on the back line. You know, to even do that off an average net is difficult, but to do it off a net ball is incredibly difficult. He won 19 that first game to Kento Momota. Okay. 
That was a marathon first game that took about 32 minutes. As we've been discussing, what effect will that have on these two? Kent Momota seeing it over the line there. But from a, from a Kempke point of view, you've got to feel frustrated having dominated much of that first game. Yeah, I mean, I think the vast majority of that first game, Gilbert yeah. was leading, and there was a time where it looked like, could it be slipping away from Momoa? Yeah. But, you know, Momoa has been world number one. He's, you know, he's, he's, and there's a reason, because he is such a good player, and he's been in that situation before, and he managed to turn it round. from his body language. But it was interesting as well, uh, Chris, because he was, he, again, a slow start to the to the opening stages of that first game, wasn't it, for Momota? Like yeah. we saw with Che and Xiao. Yeah. Uh, we also saw that with Tai Tzu Ying as well, didn't we? But the integral thing is, you know, the, the players show their quality at the, the end of the right. game, which is the integral part. If you start a bit slow, it's not good, but it's not the end of the world if you end quite well. It's how you finish, isn't it? Exactly. Wow. Brilliant. Steps in and holds it, and it's the, the accuracy. He's made that look so easy, that's not easy. You know, it looks like how can you play a winner? I mean, from the replay, it's even harder to kind of understand why. But he steps in, and he, it's the accuracy. Yeah. He totally won the foot's game card. Also playing a part. I think now it's so important to get people to just kind of steady things. Just play the full rally, don't force it too much, because if he gives away too many key points now, you see Momoa growing and growing and growing and becoming even better. Mm. And the game can then slowly start to slip away from Gemko. Control of Momoka. Yeah, and this is the thing, it's the only real mistakes we've seen, to be honest, on, on his overhead. Ooh. When he's in quite a good position, because I don't know if he's almost trying to be too exact, too perfect, going for too much. But it's just going back to, you know, there's a lot of players out there that think, oh, my defence isn't good enough. And, and it all stems from generally the lift, the lift quality. And this is why Momoka's defence, especially in the first game, looks so good, because his lift quality was so good. Lift. It was exactly the right height, exactly the right trajectory, and exactly the right placement that made it difficult for Gemka to really hurt him. Well, 
this one again that he probably feels he should have made at Three, least. Five. Yeah, I mean, whenever a player is above taper in that position, they can't afford to make a mistake because it is a gift. Mm. If a player is in, you know, a lot of trouble, your opponent's hit a very good shot, you're stretched, you're out of position, you can kind of understand it. But in that position, you know, Momoa has control of the rally. Stop going on. Play. He's taken the shot so early, so when he plays his net, his net doesn't have to go up, it just goes, look, he's there. I mean, it's a brilliant touch, but it's so tight to the net. That it's because giving himself that time, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, and Gevka's got no time then to move forward to get the next shot. You know, time is the key to everything, as yeah. in, you know, in life, in the rally. If, if you have more time on the shot, you can play a better shot, you have more variation, you can choose which shot you play. If you have no time because you're in trouble, you're stretched, very difficult to play, you know, a, a difficult shot. You generally play the most simplistic shot because it's the only shot you can play. placement it's the variation he's got you know he'd been hitting some incredible uh, attacking shots towards Gemka's backhand so Gemka's more aware of his backhand then he opens up and hits the other side Time, you can see the frustration there. It's a bit of a gift that he's given his opponent. That's good, that's it. But this is the only thing that's perfect placement. If you get what I mean, like he's having to, the only way he can win the rally in that situation is by hitting something phenomenal. That is literally on the line that, you know, two inches to the other side is out. Yeah. Two inches closer to Momota, and Momota's comfortably getting it. And it's hard, because can Gemka consistently do that? I don't think anyone can consistently do that. Good attack, but then there was the follow-up, the pressure. Gemka read what the moat was going to do here, steps in, takes it early. This is about as close as it's been so far. Second game. And he's drawn level. It's off. Oh, that's all hard to get there. Rosmus going good.
five in a row for Demke. Nice spell for him. Yeah, and I wouldn't say Gemke's having to do too much to actually win the rallies. Uh, they're, 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 that rally there, quite a comfortable mistake from Mimosa. Two rallies before, good attack from Gemke, but nothing phenomenal. Finally break that run. The thing is as well, when Momoto on this backhand Nine. kill at the net here, he's so calm and composed and he doesn't force it, he doesn't overdo it, he doesn't do something special, just gets there early and pushes it into a difficult place. But the smoothness and the speed at which he moves forward is the impressive part, especially as we're 46 minutes in. And we're not even a game and a half, and this is after an hour and 25 yesterday. You wouldn't know it. No, but that's the key, you, you honestly wouldn't, which is phenomenal. After eight matches in eight days. of uh, Momoto's attack because, to be honest, the, the final attack then, it was a good shot, but it wasn't incredible again because, you know, guessed totally the wrong way. As he did in the first game, Kemka was leading in the second in number 10, but it's Kenta Momota in front overall. We are intriguingly poised here in this match. Good. Foremost, 11 on. Cross your minds back to the 
post-interval session of the first game where Kemke was in front for most of it. That's when the motor starts to make his move. Different feel for the second game, of course. Just the net there from the moment was so good that Kemke's lift, he can only lift. I mean, it wasn't half court, but you can see where his feet is short. Probably Not enough depth for you. No one here, no one here. Yeah, but it's the net. The net from the moment was so good. So if he gets there early, it's got such good touch. In these marginal matches where it's so tight between them, this is where the, the crowd behind the party just plays that little extra part, isn't it? Well, definitely. And also, we think, you know, I know we said it a lot, but the fatigue in Momota. But the crowd gives you that extra, it could be 5% energy, belief, confidence, everything. And, you know, can make a big difference in a, in a game as tight as this, because it is literally nip and tuck. It's been the whole, the whole match has yeah. been very, 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 very close. Tough, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Because there's never been more than a few points in it. No, and the, the, the first, first game, I know, um, Momoa snatched it, but he yeah. easily not have, Yeah. And this, this one, Momoa has led, but it, as you said, it's only been by a point or two yeah. the whole. There's definitely someone on, on the drums making a, you know, a big <laughs> effort to get behind Momoa. <laughs> yeah, it's been good. There are some Indonesian fans as well, and they're, they're getting outshouted at the moment, which is uh, unusual. Even if there are only a handful of them. Steps in, takes that last shot early, and this is the thing. Momoto doesn't have time to recover and then pick up the next shot. Yeah, go early, so quick he's on that. Nothing else is going through his mind. It's the only shot he's interested in. He knows exactly where it's going because Momoto was in so much trouble on the shot before. A bit of time, here we go. Just clipping the net. Yeah, I think Gepke did incredible in that rally. He went the wrong way. And he actually did an incredible lift, but... The one here, look how early my motor is, and obviously a neck board. But this is the thing, he's got to try and find a way, he's got to push my motor off the net so there's a gap in the net to then be able to play the net so my motor can't take it as early. But the motor's that early than that. He can pretty much call upon the neck board when he chooses. Says it all from Momota. I mean, the point we're at now, 55 minutes is a 
respectable full match. Yeah. And this could easily go to three. Simamoto's going to do everything to stop that. Been excellent from Gemke. 15 off. He's battled back three in a row. It's bad timing for the motor to break a string there. Yeah, both players now are making a big effort to obviously try and keep the attack. No one wants to just move the shuttle around. Both players are being very aggressive, which is exactly what you'd expect at this point of the match. Some momentum with him. We go in front here. Oh, great reflexes. It off. Yeah, no player wants 16, to wants to clear, 16. wants to go out. They're only going out if they have to, and get, it took a massive risk there, but it paid off. Momoa's taken that so low, and the quality of the shot isn't good enough. Yeah, ben Singles, you hardly ever see a player kill uh, a drop shot, just because they've got so much court they have to cover. So Kemke is in front here. Happened, but he's never been able to hold on to the lead. First time he has managed to 17, 15. increase his lead. Yeah, it was brilliant anticipation from Gemka, but he knows Momoto doesn't really want to lift, so when he's playing net, he's pushing forward and he's ready for a net shot to be able to then get on it and try and kill it. Just approaching the hour mark. This is going to turn into an absolute <laughs> marathon if it does go to three games. Certainly has that feel. And Momota, obviously, he's going to try and do everything he can to prevent that happening. He's down by two here. He's almost done everything right, but he, he did clip the tape. Otherwise, it would have been fantastic.
That's a great shot, great one winner there for Gemke. Yeah, and again, it was the net shot that set it up. The net's so tight, see Momoa's taking that so low. He's off balance and the lift's quite short, only front, front rear tram. Up by two, Gemke. So tight the whole match. Just a point or two in it pretty much the whole the whole time. So integral now for whichever player can get the attack. If you want to be striking the shot in the downward position. He's ready to serve, you are not ready to receive. No? Play. Another little word there for me. Okay. Get up to 19. 19 yeah, I mean, Gemke's doing everything right. He's taking the risk because he knows Momoa doesn't want to lift. Mm. But here, Momoa's a little bit low, and I think he's got to go out. He's got to give himself time and space because Gemke's played, I think, three of those in sort of the last four rallies. Yeah. One of them Gemke got forwarded on, but the other two he's won the point from. Taking that risk and step forward when he's played net to look for net. These two, the umpire and Rasmus Kepke. from the umpire, the umpire's done very well done. Wow. Remember we had that bit of contention earlier on as well in the first game. This rally's going to be a bit of all out attack. No one's going to want to give the, the lift away unless they have to or unless the opponent's right at the front of the court. Brilliant. Kemke has game point here. Yeah, that, that that shows why Momoa doesn't want to. He doesn't want to lift because that is an incredible attack. It's 
So game point here for Rasmus Gemke. Which Momota saves. Listen to that crowd. This is it. It's all our attack from both players. So important to hold the net. Try to force the lift from your opponent. <laughs> With a smile on his face. Two clear points now required. This is where that crowd can make the difference. delivers. Yeah, Gimka's worked so hard in there early, stepping up so much. And then as soon as he gets the chance overhead, really well placed attack. He's had quite a lot of success around the head going straight to Momoa's backhand. He's been pretty accurate, uh, Gimka, with that shot. Once again, game point for Rasmus Gimka. long match as it is. Water, and he's going to have to go into a third. As Rasmus Gemke has taken this very, very tight second. One game on. This final rally, brilliant for Gemke. Here, this net, and then takes it off so clean. Because the shuttle's spinning a lot. So if he slightly mistimes that, that his shot could go anywhere. Perfect. Last thing that Kento Momoto probably would have wanted. But we are going to go into a third. Well, if you're a, a badminton aficionado, this is probably great because you're seeing another game. If you're Kento Mamota, Final game. you really would have liked Not to have finished that all off. Play. And then thinking about the uh, the next round, if you're Rasmus Gemke, you'd be delighted. He pulled it back. this third game now. But just the, uh, the levels of supreme stamina and fitness at the moment required of uh, Kenton and Water. Remind that yesterday he played Singapore's Lo Kien Yu. That one took 85 minutes. The eighth seed he bundled out in the opening round, so that in itself is a 
is a great result. And that came off the back of two qualifying matches on Tuesday, which, by the way, came off the back of Kim going all the way in the Korean Masters. He won that on Sunday evening. Presumably, given that that wasn't Guangzhou, it would have been tough to have traveled that now. I'm assuming you probably got back to Japan here on Monday. <laughs> it's quite the schedule, isn't it, Chris? Yes, yeah, it's, it's tough. Um, it's not something he'd want to be doing, as in having to travel and then play and everything. But he's in a position where he's going to have to play a lot of tournaments in the next kind of four or five months. We've got till about May, if I'm not mistaken, for the uh, Olympic qualifying period, right? Yeah, I think it's the very end of April, yeah, but it's, how is he going to plan his tournaments if he realistically does want to qualify for Olympics? Um, it's going to be a very, very big ask because he's had approximately three months of uh, not really competing yeah. and so on. And not just playing, but also going deep. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big ask down at, I think he's 41 in the world at the moment. Um, and he's got to be... You know, he's, he's got to be a lot, lot higher because he wants to be seeded in tournament so that he doesn't have a really tough first round. Yeah. Oh, how good was that? Yeah, brilliant shot. I think the, the drop shot from Genfer before you could tell how low he took it, he took it incredibly low. He's got himself stuck a little bit in the motor. Brilliant shot. Yeah, he got himself in a little bit of trouble on the shot before. It's how accurate men's singles players are. We'll see where this lands. No chance. On the water. minutes of a, a very intense match generally a few more simpler mistakes might creep in with concentration as the rally goes on someone tries to play too tight a shot or they just lack that tiny bit of concentration on the shot really aggressive from Gebka there great pressure again that he's putting on the motor as soon as he's getting a half chance he's Five, stepping in three he's not concerned about the rear of the court here stepping in pressure good almost cut out around the head People streaming into this venue as well. Good support for Momota. Made 
it in. What a slumping his shoulders there. Deeper breaths as one going on for him. Yeah, it's definitely a big ask. 76 minutes in, I mean, no matter what happens, you're going to be talking around the three hour mark for the last two days, yeah. which is tough on its own. But, you know, add that to the other matches he's played over the last eight days, is, it's a mammoth task. I mean, that's what that massive deep breath was for to summon a bit extra to try to. For him. Yeah, it's good there from Romero. As soon as he got Gemper in, in a deep position and a bit of trouble, he just stepped up and took that risk. You see there, steps up. And then it's a comfortable put away. Moving forward there, yeah, not concerned about the back. If his opponent clears over him, he feels comfortable that he can deal with it. tactically of what he was doing and then all of a sudden it kind of swaps again. Warning for misconduct for delaying the game. See umpire wait. now as he has given a yellow card to, to Gemka. Yeah, saying, ongoing, isn't it? Yeah. Saying that he's just taking too long on the return of serve. Both players now are stepping up so much. Explain that for people who may not be as familiar with Bamford and what that. What yeah, that so means. you know, essentially, it's supposed to be continuous play. You're not supposed to have a break, a delay. If there is a break or a delay, you're supposed to ask the umpire. So if it's the, the court's wet, or if your string breaks, or you know something of that, then you ask politely the umpire to, you know, do your shoelace up, whatever it is. Yeah. But the, the umpire's decided that Gemko was taking too long in the return of serve, which is essentially not having continuous play. So for that, he had been warned a few times. So the umpire produces a yellow card to officially caution him. simplistic but he's going to be that fatigued that he's almost going to have 
a second voice inside him telling him that, you know, you're so tired, you can't do it, you know, he's, he's going to have this force almost trying to stop it. He's got to, he's got to keep pushing, he's got to try and get the attack, he can't be too passive. He's got to try and put some pressure on his opponent, but it's so hard to do when you, you know, you can't move quite at full speed, you've got nothing left, no energy reserves left. the thing Momoto's having to work so hard to stay in the rally and most of the rallies Gemka's having control over because he's the one taking the risk as in making the move trying to get there early Two one shots up one. yeah and it's, it's very evident Game now five. he looks gassed doesn't he yeah I mean it's no surprise and he's at a point now where how much more does he have to give? And if you're Genko, you just keep pushing. You just keep doing what you're doing. You don't go for anything better. Not to do anything extra special. No, and that's the key. You just keep focusing on yourself and, and playing the rallies as he's playing them. Momoto's the one that has to change what he's doing because he's now got quite a deficit. But it's so hard for him to change what he's doing because he hasn't got that extra speed, that extra explosive power. Uh, very good, wasn't it? 11, five, From Gemke, the biggest lead we've Gengen. had at an interval so far. Rasmus Gemke leading 11-5 in the third game. Looking good here against Kenta Momota. Rasmus Gemke, this is the biggest lead I think any of them have had so far. Six 11, points. Five. In this third Eight. game. on balance just because of the speed he's got and look at that he's in a great position the lifts not even to the past the front service line whereas before we know how good those lifts were yeah and the thing was as well 
Genko, when he was attacking previously, he was fractionally off balance, so his attack wasn't as good. Now he's almost hitting winners every time he's getting the attack, just because he's on balance in a good position. Again from Gamke. Service over. And he's just staying a little, 14, taking a little eight. longer to recover each time. That's how low Momoa played that last lift. He took it so low, he's in so much trouble, and it gives Gamke so much time on his overhead. And then it was an incredibly accurate, accurate smash to finish the rally. and also Gemka hasn't given him that opportunity. <laughs> I would say any time the shot the shuttle sorry has been close to the net it's gone in the favour of the Moa today. But we are in Japan. <laughs> well, he's uh, not had consecutive points for a long while so Needs that. He's just found an extra level, isn't he? He's just found an extra yard of time and space. 
but this is the thing when you get on a run, and as he's on a, he's only on a small run now, but he's on a run. Gives him that extra little something. The crowd's getting behind him. All of a sudden, he starts to believe again. Three in a row, and the lead is only three now for Gemkin. And when a momentum slightly changes in a game, it buys a horrible feeling, as in on the receiving end. Exactly. Yeah. So for Gemkin, he's going to maybe get more tense, more. Ah. He's going to force it a little bit more. But it's going to be interesting these next two points. What we're going to see. Oh, well, it looks like he might have been dying out. Kento Amorta. Doing well here. Can we continue? Seven three since the interval to Kento Mamota. Oh, this is excellent now from the Japanese player. And this is the thing now for Gemko, it's going to feel like, you know, the whole world is crashing down on him just because it is quite a big run now, a run of points has gone against him. And it gives my motor that belief and the crowd has just got louder. Five in a row for Kento Momota. Something just switched. Last two rallies, Gemp has made unforced errors, yeah. which we hadn't really seen. He's been very consistent, right. and it's just when momentum changes as it has. Gemp he didn't have control of this game, but he was leading. He looked good. We could clearly see Momo was struggling physically, but then all of a sudden, when the momentum changes, it feels you know it feels horrible. And these two simple, you know, unforced errors in these last two rallies have occurred. Six in a row. That's the best one anyone has had in this entire match. He is on a roll, isn't he? And this is incredible. I mean, I'm going to be wow. honest. He looked down and out. Absolutely. And, and how he's turned this game around. That's an incredible shot from nothing. It is a slightly short clear. But he's got behind it. And now he believes. You yeah. can see his body language is Look different. Look at that smile. Yeah. Four minutes. <laughs> Amazing. It's just out. The run comes to an end. Fifteen. Given the, how well he was playing, we might actually be pretty disappointed with that. Is that a little way back in for Gemke? Seven points in a row. Ten four since the interval. Into Momota. Brilliant. I mean, he's hit so many winners as well in the last few minutes. But he's totally different. He's getting up. He's he's reading the game. He's not waiting for things to happen. He's the one that's trying to make things happen. I remember there was maybe about ten minutes ago he was on his haunches. And just he wouldn't get up quickly. And we thought that was it. That was probably 
as far as it could go. Yeah, it's been an incredible turnaround in the last sort of eight, nine points. 14-8 to Gemka. Great shot. Yeah, just a real that, didn't it? Shot is over. 16 off. Oh. Like the other two, it looks like it's going to go the distance. What a time for it to swing back and forth again. Remember, he was in almost total control of the first game, which he ended up losing Rasmus Gemke. Again, okay. How many times has that been there? Maybe four. Wow. The thing is, from the angle we're at, it's, it's impossible. It's impossible to be able to see if it's a four or not. Well, he's talking to Kento here. But Kento oh, saying, that's not, not this, not that's right. this is the thing. I, I get it. I get it from Gemka. He's obviously very frustrated. He's very frustrated. But he's got to now calm himself down right. and refocus on the match. Because he can't change this call here. I don't even know in that replays. Ooh. Let alone real time. But the most integral thing is now, the, the point is passed. So Done. Can, yeah. Yes, it. Gemka now has to refocus. He's obviously very frustrated, but he's got to refocus, clear his mind, and start again. Side out. Yeah. Just right. from there. He's just got to keep playing the rally, moving the shuttle around. It's evident every time my motor's moving from the back to the front, he's looking so tired that he's just got to keep his opponent moving. You would think that would be the, the intuitive thing to do to keep my motor running around as much as possible. It's hard sometimes because when you're fatigued, Gemper is as well, he's frustrated. Yeah. With having the discipline to play the right shot, you know, after shot, after shot, that's a great shot. Finishing off. Well up by Gemper. Feels like you can see that finish line now. This is honestly incredible. It was 14 8, I think it was, <laughs> to get but, uh, 14 8. You know, right. I'm going to be honest, I had doubts if Momo could come back. Yeah. He looked down and out. Absolutely. And, you know, we're, uh, we're nearly at 100 minutes <laughs> of his eighth match in eight days. This is unbelievable. Coming off the back of an 85 minute yesterday. I think Gemka's taking all the risks now because he's feeling uncomfortable. And that is, you know, it, it turns out to be a very easy point because he's, he, he's anticipated a drop shot because he's trying to step up. Four match points for Kento Mamota. From 14-8 to 20-16. What an absolutely incredible turnaround. He's won 12 of the last 14 points. This has been one of the remarkable comebacks, especially with the context of this man and what he's had to be going through over the last couple of years. Kento Omota has won 13 of the last 15 points. So shake it there from Rasmus Kempke. He will be hurting. I honestly don't know how the motor is still going. Absolutely incredible comeback. Incredible comeback. Is that one right up there for you, Chris? Yeah, considering he looked down and out, I'm going to be honest, he, he, he looked like he had nothing left. Gemka looked like he had some kind of control of that final game. 
Kenjo Momota, 21-19. What a match this has been. What a result for Kenta Momota. The fairy tale return continues, as it were. And in front of a home crowd as well. They get to see him another day at least. Kenta Momota, who's now the qualifier, Kenta Momota, has beaten Rasmus Gemke. 21-19, 20-22, 21-16, in just about 100 absorbing minutes.